What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with another Greedfall video for you guys today and today guys we'll be going over all the skills in Greedfall. So guys for those of you that aren't aware or haven't played the game yet, there are skills, attributes and talents. We'll be going over all three of those today and showcasing to you guys what exactly it entails. Now guys, depending on what class you pick at the beginning of the game, you will gain certain abilities. So for example, if you pick the warrior class, you will gain the ability for one-handed blades as well as one-handed heavy weapons. If you pick the spellcaster, you will gain the stasis and the divine magic ring. If you pick the technical, you will gain the set trap, the firearms and the one-handed blades. Now in between these, you also have smaller trees. So these are sort of neutral trees, I guess you could say, but they do correspond to each of them. So you can see here magic healing, you've got uh, rolling, and that is pretty much it. And then shadow burst. So yeah, now at the end of each of these skill trees, there is one really big ability that allows you to perform a lot of damage. Now you can see here each of these classes has one of those, and each of them are just as powerful as each other. So guys, what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be going over the technical skill tree. So the technical skill tree is this green skill tree over here, including the one-handed blades. So let's jump into it. We're going to be starting off at the firearms. So you can see here that the first level, which is what you will be gifted when you first start the game, allows the use of pistols and firearms. You can then upgrade that to increase it to more damage. So you can see here precise calibration increases the amount of damage your firearms deal. The next level also causes them to do armor damage to 20%. The next level after that causes a greater loss of balance. So when you fire them at enemies, you'll actually knock them over and deal more damage. The rifle is then unlocked and allows you to use rifles instead of pistols, which I'm not too sure how that works because as you guys can see, I actually have a rifle equipped right now. You can see down here, so rifle with boar ivy, ivory decoration. So I'm not too sure why it's letting me use that rifle, maybe because it was uh, DLC. Quite possibly that could be why, but you can see that that allows you to use rifles. You then gain the ability to anoint weapons. Now, this means you can pretty much apply our chemical preparations on weapons, which adds effects to the following hits. So, for example, you can get poison, you can get fire damage, you can get other damage, other elemental damage, which is really cool. So, you then also have the alchemical dosage, which increases the number of hits, benefiting from the effects of chemical preparations. So, for example, once you apply the poison or whatnot to your weapon, you'll have four max attacks with that certain element to it. This allows you to have six, and you then gain an extra 50% dose application for the following skill with Assassin's Touch. So you can see here, weapons that are anointed with a poisoned alchemical mix apply a stronger dose of, dose of poison. You can then move on to the focused alchemical fire, which increases the damage dealt by alchemical preparation of elemental damage. And then you have the alchemical earthquake. Increases the loss of balance caused by the alchemical mix of magic damage. So this provides an extra 50% stun, which means you'll be knocking over your opponents a lot more. Now, once you unlock, well, once you, if you decide to go down this tree, you will then gain the ability to throw bombs. Now, these are really good because they will do a lot of damage in a large area. You can see there, 450 element damage, 600 stun, 225 armor damage, and an area of effect for 5 minutes. But it costs 100% fury. So, it's worth it in the end. You then have the upgrades for the bomb, which is a powerful bomb, and adds an extra 3 meters to the area of effect, bumping it up to 8 meters. And then the final skill is that bomb also poisons the enemy's hit, which is pretty incredible. Now, guys, if we come down to the trap side, so set traps allows you to put our chemical preparations on the ground that explode when enemies come near and damage en every enemy in the explosion radius. So if you go for the technical tree, if you go for the technical class, you will gain the ability to pretty much set traps. Uh, the first skill that you get for that, though, is the instantaneous setting of traps on the ground. So it allows you to put them pretty much instantly on the ground, which is great. You then gain destructive elemental preparations. So this increases the destruction of armor from elemental damage. So your traps will deal an extra 50% armor damage, which is pretty good because as technical, you don't really have anything to deal armor piercing damage as your blunt weapons are the ones that deal damage to armor. Rapiers, I mean, obviously rapiers and stuff like that can deal damage, but 
the blunt weaponry is best for dealing armor piercing value. So you definitely want to get this skill if you use traps a lot. Now following on from that, this one increases the magical damage inflicted by the traps. So an extra 50% on that. Next up, you then have Economical Alchemy. Now, this one's pretty good as well. So this one allows the recovery of ingredients near the location of the explosion of the Set Trap and the File Throw. So that is pretty good in itself. Now, following that, you then have the File Throw. Now, this allows you the throwing of alchemical preparations which explode on impact. So they're pretty much miniature bombs, pretty much, you could say. And they allow you to throw the bombs into certain areas damaging enemies. So you can see here, light grenades, they can now be launched from further away. And then you get the Mephitic Discharge, which uh, pretty much causes a stronger dose of poison to the explosion or the file throw. So if you're using traps or your file throw, you'll get an extra 25% poison dosage applied. Then you will get the Extended Stasis Alchemy. So Stasis pretty much freezes your enemy in spot for a certain amount of time, which is really good. So you can see there you get an extra 50% effect duration with that. And then you have Devastating Grenades. So increases the area of effect of the explosion of Set Trap and File Throw by an extra 1.5 meters. So that is pretty good. Now as a technical class, you do gain the ability to start off with three traps. An Elemental Trap, a Poison Trap, and a Stasis Trap. So you can see them all there. Each of those you can place down as well, so it's really worth it. Now... Looking on to these little side skills, you need to actually have both sort of paths unlocked in order to get to this one. So it can be a bit costly, but it certainly can be use w worth it. So for the mid technical and magic tree, you can see here that you gain shadow burst. So it knocks back and deals magic dam damage to all enemies around the caster. So you can see there 350 magical damage, a 300 stun, a 4 meter area of effect, fury generation of 5, but a magic cost of 250 pretty worth it in my opinion and you can see here that these next abilities will pretty much upgrade it so you can see temporal rift greatly slows enemies in close proximity when casting the shadow burst relentless shadow increases damage dealt by the shadow burst by an extra 50 percent which is great and large shadow increases the area of effect by an extra two meters and the devastating shadow increases the loss of balance so you get an extra 50 percent stun which will cause them to fall over now, if we come into the Technical and Warrior, you can see you gain the ability to roll quickly using dodge a second time, and it does not work with the Divine Magic Ring, however. So do be careful of that, and try not to invest in too many points if you're going down this path. The next ability for that increases the Fury generated by all attacks, so you get an extra 10% Fury. Fury is what you use to pretty much perform your large-scale attacks as well. Um, and then by counter attacks, you gain an extra 20% when you counter them. So once again, it could be worth it. Increases the damage inflicted by attacks hitting your enemies from behind. So if you're very sneaky and you like to stab them from behind, this will definitely be the skill to go for. And then you have Devious Fury, which increases the fury generated by attacks from hitting your enemies in the behind. Literally in the behind. So you get an extra 20% fury generation. So it is worth it. So guys, that's the technical tree. Let's move on to the uh, warrior tree, I guess you could call it. I think it is called the warrior tree. So the warrior tree starts off with one-handed blades as well as one-handed heavy weapons. So one-handed heavy he weapons are maces, hammers, and axes, while one-handed blade weapons are pretty much every other sword. So after the initial one-handed blades, you then gain the ability to deal an extra 10% damage with one-handed blades. You then gain, once again, an extra 20% damage on unarmored enemies. So once you break down through their armor, you then deal an extra 20% damage to them, which is well worth it if you are going for the warrior tree, because your blunts will definitely take care of the enemy's armor with no problems. Uh, you can see here, strong kick. The kick unbalances more, so you get an extra 100% chance for stun. And then you gain that the kick damages armor, which is pretty interesting. You need to have a pretty damn strong kick in order to damage some armor. So the first sort of ability you get for this is long blades. Now this allows the use of two-handed blades. So uh, the basic attack is a mowing attack that hits in a small area. And then you have the destabilizing attack, which is a kick that deals no damage but causes a great loss of balance. And the furious attack is a guaranteed hit. So if you want to go for the sort of big burly warrior build, you will want to go for the long blades. Now next up from there we have sharpened edge. Attacking with long blades deals more damage by an extra 10%. And then the moving attack has an increased area of effect. 
So your standard swing has an extra half a meter range on it, so, you know, that could be worth it dealing with a lot of enemies. You then have Steel Squall. The mowing attack has a greater combo speed, so you'll be able to pull off combos quicker. And land squanet steadiness. So balance when using long blades is reinforced. So an extra 50, 50 balance. Balance is really great. Balance pretty much is what prevents you from getting knocked down when fighting enemies. So you want to try and find armor with the most balance. So it's really good. Definitely worth investing in. So the one of the ultimate, well, I guess the ultimate ability for the warrior is fury. So a cry of rage which greatly increases attack speed and combo speed. So this lasts for 15 seconds, you gain chain speed of an extra 50%, attack speed by an extra 30%, and it costs 100% fury. Now from this, you can uh, you gain powerful fury, which fury also increases the destabilizing effect of attacks, so you get an extra 100% stun. And then finally, fury restores health and armor, so you get a 500 HP healing and 150 armor recovery, which is pretty good. Now let's move on to uh, the heavy weapons. So it's pretty much the same layout as the one-handed blades, an extra 10% damage. You get attacking with one-handed heavy weapons can be changed slightly faster. So you'll attack slightly faster in terms of combos with your heavy weapons. You then have attacking with one-handed heavy weapons causes a higher loss of balance. So more chance to knock your enemy over onto the ground. You then have armor breaker. So the powerful attack deals more damage to armors. So you get an extra 50% armor damage, which is well worth it because if you come up across heavily armored opponents, you're going to be in a bit of a pickle if you can't take out their armor. Now the heavy weapons ability is the two-handed heavy weapons ability. I bet no one saw that coming. So you can see here basic attack is a slow and destructive heavy attack. Destabilizing attack is a slower annihilating attack but deals even more damage. Now these upgrades are obviously going to buff that. So attacking with two-handed heavy weapons deals more damage by 10%. Balance when using two-handed weapons is reinforced. Once again, an extra 50 balance, which is always good. Annihilating attack now creates a shockwave that can cause a loss of balance near its point of impact, which is really sick. So 50% stun in an area of effect of 2 meters. You then have seismic shock, which increases the area of effect of the shockwave. So, you know, you're going to be jamming out earthquakes all over the place. Well worth it. Now, the tree in between the warrior and the magic is magic healing. So, instantly heals the caster. Useful to stay alive. 250 HP healing. 5 fury generation, but 150 magical cost. But you can see here you gain purifying healing. So, magic healing also cleanses poisons. Magic healing restores my health, so an extra 50%. Steel healing. Magic healing also restores armor, which is really good if you're using it for like bosses and whatnot. So, you'll gain an extra 100 armor. And magic healing also affects allies for half of its effects. Which, once again, is a really solid uh, skill tree here. Especially if you're going for healing and you're starting to run out of potions. Good choices here. So, guys, let's move on to the magical tree. So, when you first pick magic, you have stasis and the ability to use divine magic rings. Divine magic rings are pretty much your magic attacks. So, they are worth it. But, first off, we're going to go through the magic ring because that is going to be your weapon. So you can see there the basic attack is a shadow missile, the destabilizing attack is shadow impact, so you deal 50% magic damage plus 200% destabilizing effect, but it costs 3 magic, so you will be constantly using your magic here, so do be careful with that. But the first skill you get is Ravenous Shadows, so both your spells do 10% more magical damage, your combo speed of shadow impact then increases with the next level, you then gain a 100% stun with the Shadow Impact, so that's your destabilizing attack, which is going to be used to knock over opponents, which you can then attack as well to finish off. You then gain Light Projectiles, so the magic cost of Shadow Missiles gets decreased by 10%, which is great because your magic will constantly be used while using this skill, while using these all skills. Now the first ability you get is the Lightning Dash, which is the instantaneous dash when quickly dodging a second time. So this will only work with the Divine Magic Ring. So pretty much you dodge instantaneously straight again when dodging a second time, which is well worth it. You then, this pretty much all upgrades your Lightning Dash. So you gain faster than the Lightning. Allows faster attacks after a Lightning Dash. Shadow Impact costs less magic energy. So your Destabilizing Attack costs 10% less, which is great again. Range Shadow Impact, and you can see so pretty much it speaks for itself. You gain an extra range from your Shadow Impact. And you then get the Whirlwind of Shadows, 
which allows you to attack much faster with shadow missiles. Now guys, the ultimate ability for the magic tree is Storm. So this sends a shockwave causing a stasis for all enemies in combat. So this will freeze all enemies in combat for 8 seconds, which will allow you and your companions to pretty much pick them off and deal damage to them. But you can see here the vulnerability storm then renders enemies vulnerable to magic damage and slowing effects even out of stasis. So they gain negative 25 magical resist, negative 25 attack speed, and that lasts for 15 seconds. So great for dealing with tons of enemies and it's well worth it. You then have the extended storm, which increases the duration by 5 seconds, which, you know, is great in its own right. So guys, let's cover the stasis side. So effect duration is 20%, so stasis lasts longer. You then gain stasis, which damages enemy armor. So you get 20 army damage every second, which is very good. So these ones definitely pair well with each other. Stasis costs less magic energy by 25%, so it reduces the cost by 25%. Once again, great. Anything that saves magic is good. You can see here stasis makes immobilized enemies more vulnerable to the next strike they will receive, so it causes them to take 50% damage. Now their skill is Shield of the Enlightened, so it increases physical armor and regenerates it progressively for the duration of the effect. Useful to protect oneself from enemies wielding light weapons. So the effect lasts for 20 seconds, you gain 10 Fury Generation. It costs 100 magic, but you gain 150 armor with 5 armor regeneration every second. So this is actually pretty good. It allows you to pretty much tank a lot more damage than even, say, a warrior almost. But uh, once again, you've got to be careful of the armor that you're actually wearing as well. So these next skills will then increase that effectiveness. So Shield of the Enlightened also increases balance, so you gain 30 balance. You then gain an extra 5 Fury Generation from incoming attacks. And then you have Shield of the Enlightened increasing Elemental and Magic Resistance. So you gain an extra 20% Elemental Resistance, 20% extra Magical Resistance, and then you gain Blessing of the Enlightened. So Shield of the Enlightened also affects allies for half of its effects. So that is pretty good in itself. But guys, that is pretty much it for the skill tree. We're going to move on to the attributes and the talents, but the attributes and the talents pretty much speak for themselves here. We'll go through them quickly. So you pretty much have strength, agility, mental power, willpower, accuracy, and endurance. Now each of these correspond to what class you pick. So the top two correspond to the warrior, the middle two correspond to the technical, and the bottom two correspond to magic. Now you can see here strength increases the stun chance by 20% and the armor damage by 10% while the endurance increases your maximum life and balance and it pretty much enables you to wear the heaviest armors. So you gain 100 life points and 20 balance, 20% 20 balance. Now each time you level up these skills I guess you could call them, well that's the attributes sorry, you will gain the same effects as the last one so for example endurance is plus 100 life points plus 20 balance. So that is the whole way across, and that is what applies there. You then have strength, which increases stun and increases armor damage, and that is the whole way across as well. So let's move on to agility. Agility increases the fury generation and all damage inflicted in melee combat. So you gain plus 10 physical damage, plus 1% fury generation, and that is the same the whole way across. And then the other class for technical is accuracy. So this increases the power of all firearms and alchemical preparations. So a tribute required to wield the best firearms. So you gain an extra 10% damage and 10% armor damage each time you level this attribute up. Let's move on to the magic side. So you have mental power level 1, increases the power of all spells and the attribute required to wear the best rings. So you gain magical damage and fury generation for each level. And then you have willpower. So Willpower gives you 100 magic points every level up. It also gives you the, an extra second of effect duration, which is really good for pairing with all those magical skills like stasis and whatnot. So you'll gain an extra one second on those effects. Now guys, finally coming up, we have talents. So there are a couple of talents. There's six in total. And once again, they pretty much correspond to what class you pick. So you have science. And you have lockpicking, which is pretty much for the technical class. You have intuition and charisma, which you can use for the magical class. Or you can pretty much pair these however you want, to be honest. But each class does recommend certain ones. We will be going over those in a future video as well, so keep an eye out for those guys. 
but you then have Vigor and Craftsmanship. So Vigor and Craftsmanship is pretty much for your warrior classes, but let's go through them. So Charisma slightly reduces merchants' prices and slightly improves your companion's combat abilities, which I don't understand why it would improve their combat abilities. It also increases the chance of success of some dialogue choices. So when you have a choice, you can choose Charisma and it'll give you a percentage. This increases that. And you can see that it pretty much just further increases your companion's abilities and reduces merchant prices as well as increasing the chance success chance of dialogue choices so that's for charisma let's move on to science so science level one allows you to make simple potions and it also allows you to destroy weak wars with the help of explosive files uh, science level two allows you to craft bullets and alchemical preparations and crafting potions uses fewer ingredients science level three allows you to craft complex potions and crafting bullets and alchemical preparations uses fewer ingredients. Definitely good for the technical class if you want to make potions and poisons and bullets and stuff like that. You then have lock picking, which I would pick regardless of what class you start off with because there are a lot of locks in the starting area. So lock picking level one lets you pick simple locks. Enemy traps are easier to see. Lock picking level 2 lets you pick advanced locks and lets you disarm and recover enemy traps. Level 3, complex locks and enemy traps are no longer sprung when you pass over them. So this is great. Imagine the shock on an enemy's face when you just casually walk over their trap that they set for you. It'd be great. So next up we have intuition level 1. So gathering sites become easier to see. So this is where you can gather our chemical ingredients and stuff like that. They become slightly brighter. And it also increases the number of ingredients and objects gained through gathering and looting, as well as unlocking contextual dialogue options. So in certain cases, you can choose an, intelli an intuition uh, chat option, I guess you could call it, and that'll pretty much provide you with a different route to your quest. So intuition level two increases the map discovery radius and further increases the number of ingredients and objects attained through gathering and looting, as well as unlocking more dialogue options. Level three gives you the maximum number of ingredients and objects attained through gathering and looting. It also increases the number of ingredients obtained through recycling and unlocks all of the contextual dialogue options. Now, next up we have craftsmanship level one, which allows you to craft basic weapon and armor upgrades. Level two allows you to craft advanced weapon and armor upgrades, as well as recycling pieces of equipment to create ingredients even without a crafting table. Level three allows you to craft master weapon and armor upgrades, as well as increasing the number of ingredients obtained through recycling. Now the final uh, talent is Vigor. So it lets you pass through certain difficult passages that require balance, and it also increases the maximum ammo capacity and lets you slightly recover HP and magic outside of combat. Level two allows you to jump through certain passages. It also increases your maximum ammo capacity and allows for slightly faster HP and magic regeneration outside of combat. Level three allows you to climb difficult passages as well as increases the maximum carrying capacity and allows for significantly faster HP and magic regeneration outside of combat. But guys, that is pretty much it for all the skills, attributes, and talents in Greedfall. So hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight into what sort of class you want to build for yourself, even if you are deciding at the beginning what class you want to build. Hopefully that'll help you out. But guys, that's going to wrap up the video today. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below for more. But other than that, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. I got this soul.